Good morning. This is Keith Hedrick. I am going to call the Ground Utilities Commission Water Pollution Control Authority meeting for February 17, 2021 to order. This is a Zoom meeting. The roll call. Uh, Chairman Hedrick is here. Commissioners Scully, Zuliani, and Godley are here, so we have a quorum. Approval of the minutes. I need a motion to accept the minutes of the public hearing of January 4th, 2021. So moved. Seconded. Moved by Zuliani, seconded by Scully. Are there any uh, corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. House abstains, Jeff Godley. I don't think it was. Okay, there. sorry. There was one abstention by Commissioner Godley. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I need a motion to move the regular minutes, regular meeting, regular correction. I need a motion to move the minutes for the regular meeting of January 20th, 2021. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Scully, second by Zuliani. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Motion carries. Next is approval of the treasurer's report. I need a motion to accept the treasurer's report for January, 2021. So moved, Jeff Godley. Second. Moved by Godley, seconded by Scully. Uh, any, any comments on the treasurer's report? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, motion carries. Okay, communications and correspondence. We have the thank you from the fair, from the Fairview Odd Fellows Home uh, for our support of the Art of uh, Chocolate sponsorship, which was tremendous. Uh, and we also had a letter uh, via circuitous route, but we got a letter from a Tri-Town -tri Trail Association, and we'll be discussing that a little bit later this morning. Is there any other communications or correspondence. Okay, so the next takes us to public communication and response of state of Connecticut executive order number 7B, protection of public health and safety during COVID-19 pandemic and response, further suspension or modification of statutes dated March 14, 2020, suspending in-person open meeting requirements. All public meetings will be closed to the public at this time. Public meetings will be available on Zoom with information above. If you wish to address the commission, please send written communications sent to groundutilities.com by 9 a.m. on the date of the meeting. It'll be read during this portion of the agenda. Do we have anyone that has any citizens' petitions in the audience? Okay, I do have... Mr. Mayor, Mayor, I, um, we have one new business item. I'm not sure if anyone who's connected understands that uh, at that portion of the meeting, they will not be able to speak, but they can present their information or petition to the commission here at the public session. Now, I'm not sure if they understand that. Okay, then that is a good point. So I, so if you, I recognize a couple of names. If you want to speak about what's on the agenda for the new business, and let me go through that real quick. Uh, where are we? New business is the Tri Town Trail, and okay, that's it. So, excuse me, Mayor. Mayor, I. This is Noemi. Um, I just wanted to let you know that we did have correspondence from Sam Spano. I'm not sure if. No, I, I have that and I am going to read that. Uh, but Commissioner Zuliani brought up a good point. I, I thank you, Noemi. I will not miss, I will not forget Sam's, uh, Sam's email, but. There's it, also Chad Frost on who is going to be speaking in this portion on behalf of Tritown Association, Tritown. Okay, so 
Chad, if you would like to speak under citizens petition, uh, state your name and address for the record, and then you'll have five minutes uh, to speak about the Tri-Town Trail. Sure, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you all for letting me speak. My name is Chad Frost. I'm a resident of the town of Groton, live at 251 Shoeville in Mystic, Connecticut. Um, and I just wanted to say a few things tonight, or this morning, uh, quickly, I was asked by the Tritown Trail to be here to help represent them. Uh, my office uh, did the master plan for the Tritown Trail Committee back in 2009, which is almost 12 years ago now. And we've been assisting them going forward through the permitting process uh, that they've been doing in Ledger. And if you're not familiar with it, the, the overall master plan was 14 miles of trails that connects from Creston down to the tip of Groton uh, to the Bluff Point. It's 14 miles of trails and, and it only crosses four roads, which we find very impressive. Uh, not to belabor too much, but one of the main points we found back then is we did survey all the public water companies in Connecticut. And at that point, again, uh, now 12 years ago, 40% of water companies at that point did allow some form of rec recreation. Uh, back then, we were dealing with Al Dion from the utility. We had great discussions for, I'll say, a number of years, um, but then kind of eventually over time that, that did fade out, um, and the, the Tritown Trail Committee put their focus, uh, what you can see on your screen now, on that northern section. Um, over the last year, the committee has, has built what you can see there in that enlargement box, which is approximately two miles of trail. Uh, impressively, it, they, they working with the town were able to get easements over two private parcels of land, permanent easements for trail crossing. And then they went ahead and built two miles of trail. And the outpouring of support from volunteers has been extremely impressive over the last two years. Um, and as, as we're all aware, 2020 was pretty much a crazy year. Um, and throughout 2020, uh, we've all seen just how much uh, need there is for public open space and trails, um, and we've all taken a, a greater appreciation of that. Locally, we have some numbers to reflect that as well. Um, the Connecticut Trail Census has a trail counter out at the bridge between Haley Farm and Bluff Point at the a crossing over the rails there. Uh, it's been out there for a couple of years, and from 2019 to 2020, there was a 50% increase in use, 50% growth. Uh, in one year, and we really attribute that to uh, obviously people knowing about it, but especially 2020 and people really looking to get outside and recreate. So we know there's a huge demand for Groton, both town and city residents uh, for public access to trails. We know that trails generate millions of dollars in economic activity while providing healthy quality of life and safer circulation for bicyclists and pedestrians. We know they provide greater environmental appreciation for everyone who uses them, and the study after study has shown that there are increased property values to those around them. We're hopeful and we believe that trails could be a benefit to both the utility and the residents of the city and the town alike. Uh, we're not here to get into details or specifics. We appreciate the opportunity to be here. We're really looking to begin the discussion with staff, who's the right person, who's the right people to be talking to, and start exploring the opportunities that might exist um, and how we go about, what's the best way to go about that dialogue. So again, thank you very much for allowing us to speak and I will be here through the remainder of the meeting if you have uh, any questions. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Mayor, I. Mr. Rob Giuliani, you have the floor. Uh, question for Mr. Frost. When was the town trail map designed? How, what year did that take place? How long has this been in existence? Uh, we did the master plan. We presented it to all the different municipalities in 2009, June of 2009. And did it go to the town council or? Yes, it, it went, well, it went to the town council, both the Groton Town Council, Ledger Town Council, and eventually I believe it also went to Preston, Board of Selectmen, uh, where each of those entities adopted um, as, as what one of their goals for development. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, is there anyone else who would like to speak? Let me see. I don't recognize Scully has a question. I'm sorry. Uh, Commissioner Scully, you have the floor. Uh, uh, Chad, your map, is this uh, conceptual design or is this, are any of these trails active? Uh, well, I know Bluff Point and, and some of them are, but. 
Um, yes. I would say it was intended, it was a master plan back in 2009. So it was intended um, to look at where trails could go. We had three different options as far as, um, you know, utility property and what might work or might not work. Um, there were definitely areas where there were no trails when we were proposing trails and there were areas where there were current trails that we were looking to take advantage of. Um, but it was really, it was the master plan, right? It was the guiding document as to how might uh, Southeastern Connecticut be able to connect, you know, 14 miles of recreational trail. So ho I hope that kind of answers your question. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're just trying to link some exist existing trails together. Um, Correct. Uh, existing trails and again for the utility specific we dealt with Al quite a bit. Um, we weren't looking to blaze new trails through the property. We were looking to utilize existing roadways. So, so almost anything that we had shown as a possibility on the utility property was an existing gravel road um, that already exists. Okay. Because okay. I've always looked at uh, the cop property and Bluff Point in thought there could be very easily a trail along 117 as, as you have designed to connect those properties. Correct, yes. And that actually almost was built now 20 years ago. There was actually, uh, the, the town council was one vote away at the RTM from spending the money to build the trail that would connect cop property along 117 down to Bluff Point. Uh, there is significant right of way along there. The old roadway actually used to be closer to the utility property. Uh, uh, and if you look at the trees right along there, if you're driving on 117, there's kind of a gap in the trees where the old road used to be, which we think would be a perfect space to be able to build a trail. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other commissioners want to speak uh, or want to ask uh, Mr. Frost any questions? If not, I'll go to other speakers. Okay, Mr. Yonke, I th did you want to speak? No, I do not. I am just listening. Okay, thank you. Ms. Holdridge, did uh, you want to speak? Okay. Karen, did you, I don't, rec I don't think we have a Karen. Karen, did you want to speak on this? Okay, I'll take that as a no. I will then go continue on, whoops. So I have an email from Sam Spano, 300 Thames Street. There have been zero other days since last utility commission. I am hoping this situation continues. As I have stated before, I believe it is mainly due to the cold winter weather. The other possibility is that the odor problems were in fact all along caused by the leaking roof seal on the sludge settling tank. Hopefully this was the case. If so, then the odor should go away with good man, good for good since you management has said that the issue was fixed late last fall. We will not know for certain until the warmer spring weather. I see action item B, GUC WPCA 21-01-02 for $473,825 plus 10% contingency for low lift pump station screening and action item C, GUC WPCA 21-01-03 for $145,750 for engineering services for the same were both approved by the city council. These action items both have to do with the further mitigation of the yield problem at the new water plant. Since my question about this is stated in my comments for the one 2021 utility commission was not answered, I will ask it again. Since you, Grand Utility Management apparently knew there were yields in the reservoir to begin with, why were safeguards not engineered in the original plans for the new water filtration plant intakes and filters. Another thing, hold on, let me scroll down. Another thing I'm sure we've all heard about the recent cyber attack on the water plant in Florida. Have we here in Groton, we have in here, it's not true, we have here in Groton new 50 plus million state of the art facility that we apparently <laughs> And I keep dumb meals out of without spending a lot more money, as noted above. I hope that we've already have safeguards in place here to prevent clever hackers from getting into our new facility as they did in Florida. Again, I thank the commissioners for your help in advance. 
So would somebody from the utility like to address one, the eel issue and then the cyber issue? Uh, Mayor, this is Rick Stevens. Rick, you have the floor. Yes. Uh, first on the cyber issue, um, I think that was good for the water industry to see what happened in Florida. Uh, we're totally different in that uh, we do have all of the constraints that are required. Um, and uh, we've worked with our IT department to verify that. And we've worked with Wooden and Curran, who's our vendor who supplies our SCADA system. So we got that in writing from them and uh, Sue uh, concurred with that. But like Sue always says, where there's a particular piece of equipment, there's always opportunities. But we've met every safeguard uh, that um, Sue Blanchett, our, our IT director, was able to uh, come up with and the same with our vendor. Regarding um, preparation for um, circumstances related at the low lift, in the value engineering, we had two stations. We had the low lift station and the sludge station, both with aging infrastructure. We, um, in terms of economy, we focused on that sludge station. And we figured that since we could replace some pumps one at a time, we would work on that through expense and non-bonded capital. And the um, screens at the time, the traveling screens, we had estimates and proposals for rebuilding them and we were gonna do that with plant labor. So um, can everybody still hear me? Yes. Yes. So uh, that was the work there, but like you know, Mr. Mayor, with the with the drought that occurred, the absolute lower levels, the some failing of infrastructure that occurred, we needed to address that problem. And it's not just eels; it's eels, it's leaf litter. Um, even this year, like it's frazzle icing of the intake structures. So we uh, decided to be proactive now and working with the. Um, general manager of projects, we put together a project to integrate the aging infrastructure with the eel abatement with some energy efficiency measures at the low lift going forward. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Are there any other comments under public communication? Okay, seeing none, I will move on to the regional water update Aquatonic Cove interconnection. Who's speaking to this? So, uh, Mayor, this is uh, Mark Byron. Uh, so, we have an update on the uh, Aquatonic Cove interconnection. Um, we are we have continued to work with the uh, engineer out of Massachusetts, uh, and he is continuing to make uh, state required changes to. Uh, the design documents. Uh, our plan is uh, once he gets to over 90% uh, complete on the design documents, uh, we're going to send that out to bid and we believe that'll be by mid-March. Okay. Anything else, Ray? Oh, okay. That's all I have on that topic. Okay. Thank you. Uh... You, you know what, in an, in an effort to uh, get through this with the visitors, because staff has to be here for the whole thing, in an effort to get through the visitors, uh, I'll entertain a motion to amend the agenda to move new business directly after the regional water update, if the council, if the commission rather, wants to address the, the Tritown Trail earlier. So moved, Jeff Godley. Seconded. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries. Okay, so now we will Discuss new business, which is the Tri Town Trail Association. Uh, Ron, I'm not sure who's the lead on this discussion. Um, the the intent of this uh, topic 
was to let the commissioners talk. And it was also to open the door for Rick Stevens to give us a little bit of the commissioners, a little bit of a history lesson as to what has happened in the past. Um, I don't believe this commission has ever discussed the Tritown Trails or is really aware of it. Um, it was before uh, my tenure and yours also. Yeah, I remember as a, as a young counselor on the City of Groton City Council uh, having a presentation by the, on the, the Tritown Trail. Uh, I think it was by David Holdridge and, and uh, that's been quite a few years ago. So uh, Rick, I'll kick, I'll yield the floor to you so that you can give the commissioner some background and then that may give the commissioner something to uh, feed off of regarding questions and, and direction. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is, this is Rick Stevens. Um, so just for the commissioners, and I, I think most of the commissioners know this, but just to review if there's anyone else listening, um, we also, um, with Groton Utilities, we reach out like with the Groton Town Senior Center. We worked on um, trail access and hiking, facilitating that with the Groton Seniors for about two and a half years, most recently, pre-COVID. Uh, and they enjoyed that. We did all kinds of trails, lead hikes. We've worked with um, the town of Ledger, similar to that. We worked with, especially with the bill, uh, with the library in Ledger, because they were interested in history. So we did some historical. We've granted Pequot Sepas uh, unsupervised access to the watershed. So they conduct many uh, walks and educational opportunities to members or non-members, uh, to even classes that they have in summer camp as well. Uh, plus Avalonia, as the commissioners and you know, Mayor, we made that donation and they have uh, a trail network on that property, which is technically in the watershed. And it's really a great trail network that's available for people to hike in that. We've let Mystic Seaport come in full access. They've actually, in the rebuilding of the Morgan, they actually used a lot of the uh, lumber that they were able to harvest out of the uh, watershed. Uh, Yukon, Mitchell College, Three Rivers Community College, University of New Haven, all participate in scientific studies and have just uh, unsupervised access to the watershed for freshwater biology, for geology. So. We've been open for um, that for quite a few years. As Mr. Um, as Mr. Frost noted, we've had a, a pretty, what I consider to be a pretty positive engagement with Dry Town Trails, especially during Al Dion's tenure. <clears throat> and we actually worked, we actually did most of the design documents on the lower portion of the Dry Town Trail. We actually helped the Dry Town Trail get a grant because the actual access to the watershed in the lower reservoir system is very difficult because you're very close to the waterways. So what we were gonna do is move our fence that goes north and south in. We we're gonna facilitate the trail outside the fence. And we, uh, we did all the design documents in that. And um, like Mr. Uh, Frost said, it didn't pass at the town RTM. I believe it was two votes. It could have been one as Mr. Frost said, but I believe it was two votes. So we were disappointed because we put a lot of energy and work into that trail. Um, so we've been engaged with the Tritown Trail since 2001. I think they've done three presentations to the mayor and utility commission and to the city council uh, throughout that uh, period of time. I think that um, Unfortunately, like a lot of the models that they presented with other water utilities, we are currently understaffed. We have pretty much just two people that try to cover the entire watershed. And during the drought where we had to take reeds every day, it was very challenging. Those two people work six days a week each because we're understaffed. And now the DEEP has just released new requirements that we're gonna actually have to get more readings of more streams throughout uh, our watershed. So we have a lot on our plate. In terms of uh, vandalism and damage, 
As you know, we've had people in the watershed that tried to break down Pahegan at flashboards, holding back 40 million gallons. They were not successful. And then we've had people attempt to damage the Bascule Gate in Morgan, which at that time was holding back 300 million gallons of water. They, they damaged all the equipment, but they didn't succeed. We've had um, water standpipes that we used to test elevations smashed. We didn't know if anyone put any chemical in that. It cost us $25,000 to test for synthetic chemicals. And we had to present all that information to DPH. We've had fires. We've had people living in our watershed. We've had people drown in our watershed. Uh, we worked with the town on the dog park and the cop property, but there's trails from the dog park all the way to the reservoir. So people bring their dogs and they swim in the reservoir. Some people swim with their dogs in the reservoir. And just yesterday, we had a woman with her dog on the ice in Bunnington Pond, and they both went through the ice. So the local fire departments and our staff went up there to rescue that person. So um, I'm sure Mr. Frost is aware that staffing, security are huge concerns. And it's not for the majority of people, the majority of people that want to get in nature. We totally support that. There's a tremendous amount of opportunities as Mr. Frost pointed out with Bluff Point and Haley's. And I think if you went into that parking lot, which I did, I think you would see that over 50% were from out of state as well. Um, I've never seen a parking lot that full. So there is the matter of trash. Uh, we don't have any trash cans or trash removal or anything. And even though you ask people to, you know, pack it in, pack it out, Unfortunately, uh, there are uh, a, a minority of people who do not follow that. We've had vandalism on our dams. We've had horses rip up our dams. We've had ATV rip up our dams that cost us hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we've tried to be open to the public in organized fashion. So if, if anyone's organized, try to allow them access. We've even allowed unsupervised access. We do respond to fires and vandalism and that, that has been our thing. But we are more than willing to, um, you know, to provide Mayor you and the commissioners with any support you need. But I think since it's been a long time passing, I don't see any problem with the Tritown Trail presenting to the different boards what their new plans are, especially up north since we kind of failed at the southern portion. And we are willing to revisit the southern portion again so that people could commute uh, as they would from Ledger down through, um, if people are going to use the bicycle all weather to commute to work, that'd be great. Healthy for the environment, healthy for people. So that's all I have, Mayor. Okay, thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Rick. Commissioners, do you, are there any questions or comments at this point, Mr. Mayor? Commissioner Zuliani, you have the floor. Uh, I think this is a topic we should probably follow up on in further detail. I think we need more input from uh, uh, Grot Utilities Management in regards to what they recommend. Uh, there's going to be cost associated with something like this. Uh, one is probably establishing, setting up the trails if necessary. Uh, annual maintenance cost of just keeping everything under control. Um, Rick has indicated some additional expenses that concern me that may involve cleanup or, or uh, observation. Uh, we, we need further information before we discuss this any further. Um, mainly, I, I, I would look into uh, approval of supervised uh, access, but uh, we need to be careful here. Um, we have a very responsible resource and uh, things do go wrong and we need to avoid any major incident with this uh, uh, piece of real estate. And that's my opinion. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Scully. Look, I'm all for trails. I've been walking a lot of trails in the last year as many, many people have. Um, but we do have to protect our watershed. Like I said, the one in Rick mentioned also the uh, pushing the fence line back on 117 to put in the trail and connecting the cop property down to uh, Haley's Farm and Bluff Point. 
Um, I think that could be accomplished safely. I, I'm not sure about going north of there. I haven't um, been on those trails, uh, but I, I would like so, to see something done in this uh, safely and, and with the protection of the watershed. Um, Mr. Frost, are you still on? Yes, I am. I'm assuming there's grants available for this kind of work for these projects? There are, they're obviously competitive like every other grant right now, but yes. And uh, the, both the town Ledger and uh, the town of Groton have both gone after them. Okay. Mr. Scully, oh, anything else? Know. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Godley, do you have any comments? I know that we've discussed in the past allowing more public access, which I, I do like to see. I know that they've been successful in Hartford, um, in West Hartford, the reservoir going up Avon Mountain. It's always packed. I'd, I'd like to see how successful they have been in keeping the watershed safe while allowing public access. But, you know, I, I understand that we have limited resources and we should think about increasing our resources to monitor the watershed area. But having trail access, I think, is a great idea if we can do it and do it safely. Okay, thank you. All right, I think we've hit all the commissioners. So, <clears throat> so you know, there's there's lots of aspects of this. It's an onion, if you will. There's also across the road. There's the sheep farm that <clears throat> could be accessed and could go north and tie in. Uh, on that side, not necessarily on the reservoir that is something that was brought to my attention before. There's, there's lots of issues and, you know, there's a, there's a lot of ways to say no. And it's like, well, you worry about this because once you open this up, you open it up to everybody, right? People who are true hikers and, and true trail trail walkers they will take out what they bring in. And in some cases, they'll pick up stuff that's there. So those guys aren't the ones that we worry about. We worry about the other people and how do you keep them on the trail and how do we keep people from uh, causing damage to the reservoir and all those kinds of things. But one of the things that I am committed to in the city of Groton and with utilities is to, tr is to try to provide more walkability and bikeability where we can and if we can. So what I'm going to recommend that, that this commission does is to authorize Groton Utilities to work to talk to the, tri, the appropriate Tri-Town Trail personnel and start talks about what things would look like. We're not committing to anything yet because first of all, at this point, I don't think we truly know on both sides what we really want. So I think if we can if we can get the two parties together to start discussions, and then as issues come up, they may be brought back to this commission, or at the end, we may have to make a decision on, do we want to do this? Do we want to have limited access? Do we have full access? Do we have no access? Do we do supervised visits? Those those kind of things, but I think the commission, at this point, I don't think the commission has enough information in order to make a good decision. And I think the way that we, we resolve that is to have the appropriate Groton Utilities staff talk with the appropriate Tri-Town Trail representatives and get that discussion started and work from there. Does that seem reasonable to the commission? Yes, and I so move the, your recommendation. Okay. I I'll agree, second. a second. Well, I can, okay, then fine. I wasn't prepared to, to, to vote on this today, but, but that's fine. We can have a motion and a second to authorize Groton Utilities staff to uh, work with the tri, tri 
town trail staff regarding uh, trails and access on uh, reservoir property because it's discussions. So we have a first and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? So this will be the first step. So Chad, thank you for coming. Mr. Yankee, thank you for coming. Ms. Holdridge and Karen, thank you for coming today. And uh, we will get started. Thank you very much. We appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let me get back to, so the next thing is monthly financial highlights. E, I will turn it over. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. This is E. Um, I'm going to review the um, financial um, highlights for three divisions. So um, I'm going to start with the electric division. So for electric service, the revenue for January is 0.7% um, more than the budget. Excuse me. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, January, the electric revenue is 0.7% more than the budget and 6.1% more than last January. And residential commercial are uh, both below the budget by 2.5% and 11.4%. And industrial um, and uh, sales for resale are over the budget by 16% and 11% respectively. For year to day, um, the electric revenue is 0.3% more than the budget and 2.4% more than the same period of last year. In fiscal year to day, residential sales, industry sales, and sales for resale all um, exceed the budget, and uh, uh, the commercial sales are under the budget by almost 11%. Um, the heating degree days are 11.3% more than last January and 2.8% more than last fiscal year today. And um, this is overall for the revenue side and uh, for operation and maintenance expense and net income. Operation and maintenance expense for January are almost 15% below the budget and net income for the month is 36,000 more than the budget due to the um, over budget revenue and the below budget operation maintenance. And also um, you can see the, um, hold on, just one moment. The purchase power is 7.5% uh, more than the budget for the month due to the um, bidding cycle. And uh, um, almost half a million over the budget, um, which is 3.2% due to the bidding cycle and the, um, the more the um, power we sold to the customer for the um, year today. And uh, uh, when we look at the operation maintenance expense for fiscal year today, which is 17% below the budget, and our net income is almost 1.1 million more than the budget. And the favorable variance of net income is driven by the over budget revenue and the below budget the operation maintenance expense and um, offset by the um, over the budget, the purchase power. And the updates for the conservation funds. During the January, we have collected 83,000 from the customer for conservation funds and uh, uh, spending, uh, we spend 19,000. As end of January, we have 1.8 million um, funds available on the sim, on the uh, conservation funds hold and CMEC. This is the uh, um, overall updates for the electric division for January and year today. Any questions? Any questions from the count from the correction from the commission regarding electric? Okay, hearing none. E, please continue with water. Okay, so. Water um, revenue for January is 16.8% more than the budget and 19.4% uh, uh, more than the January. 
And the major increases came from the industrial sales and uh, which came from the three major industrial customer. They compare with last phase year and they have uh, a huge increase of the water usage. So um, due to the, um, based on the discussion with the, um, the uh, key account and uh, the information we got is the um, one of the major customers they have used a lot of water for um, the fuel cell and another is for flushing. So that's a major reason caused an increase in water usage for January and contributed to the, um, the increase of the revenue. So total water revenue for year today is 5.7% more than the budget and uh, 9.6 percent more than last fiscal year today, and residential, industrial, and sales for resale all over the budget by 4.9 um, percent, 17 percent, and uh, uh, 0.3 percent, and the commercial sales um, for fiscal year today is under budget by 6.2 percent, and. Regarding to the operation and maintenance expense and net income, operation and maintenance expense for January are over budget by 8.7%. And net earnings before the um, DWSRF grants is 100, 179,000 more than the budget. And the favorable variance is driven by the over budget revenue plus the delay of the DPH Kirsten agreement project and also, and also offset by the uh, over budget operation maintenance expense. Operation maintenance expense for fiscal year today are 4.2% uh, 4, 4 over uh, below the budget and net earnings before DWSRF grant is 1.4 million more than the budget. And also the favorable variance is driven by the over budget revenue plus the below budget operation maintenance expense and delay of the uh, DPH project. Um, for the updates of uh, water treatment plant project, as end of January, um, the GEO total spend 48.2 million on the project, on the water treatment plant project. And GEO received a total 47.3 million from the uh, drinking water state revolving funds, which including 13.2 million from the grants and 34.1 million from the loan. And by um, end of January and uh, GEO restricted 3.7 million in cash for the water treatment plan, um, the loan payment um, for the future. So this is the overall updates and the highlights for the water division, the financial uh, highlights. Any questions for water division? Thank you. Commissioners, any questions regarding water? Okay, seeing none. Uh, e, please continue with uh, sewer. Okay. So sewer revenue for January is uh, um, total is 40.9% more than the budget. And uh, the major increase is uh, also came from the industrial customer. Um, and uh, one thing I want to point out, because uh, we mentioned it before, uh, one of the major custom, industrial customer, we um, um, temporarily stopped the meter, the deduct meter um, charge. And uh, uh, but the January will be the last month, and uh, uh, the February we will, we will resume the uh, deduct meter for um, that the major industrial customer. So um, for the uh, sewer revenue for fiscal year today, and uh, its total is 17.1 percent more than the budget. And residential industry sales are over budget by 5.2 and 27.7 percentage. And while commercial customer year today are below the budget by 1.5 percent. Um, operation maintenance expense for January are 10 percent below the budget and net income is 170, 176,000 more than the budget. And the favorable variance of net income is driven by the over budget revenue plus under budget operation and maintenance expense. Year to day operation maintenance expense are 20 percent below the budget and net income is 900,000 more than the budget. 
and the favorable variance of the net income is also driven by the over budget revenue plus under budget operation maintenance expense. This cash on hand for electric is 78 um, days and for water is 101 days. Overall for the um, GU, the days cash on hand is 100 days. So this is overall for sewer and the uh, days cash on hand for three divisions. Any questions? Mary, you're on mute, I think. I am. Sorry, you are correct. Thank you. Any questions on sewer? Okay, that's it. Thank you, E. You're welcome. Okay. Good job, Projects. Absolutely. Projects initiatives update, COVID-19 update. I assume, Mark, that's you. Mark, you muted. <laughs> I started a really good talk too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, th this is hot off the press this morning in the state of Connecticut. There's been 270,822 confirmed cases, uh, confirmed and probable cases of COVID-19. That's a change of 580 plus from yesterday. Uh, there have been over 6.3 million tests reported, both molecular and antigen COVID tests, and that's a change from 20,000. So, you know, we, we've ramped up, uh, you know, considerably on testing where we can do more than 20,000 in a day. Uh, the daily po test positive, daily test positivity uh, rate is less than 3%. It's at 2.83, and uh, that's the lowest uh, it's been in several months. Uh, and it's been below 3%, I think, for almost uh, four or five days now. Uh, currently hospitalized in the state of Connecticut, there's 606 patients. Uh, that's down by 12 since yesterday. And if you recall a month ago, we were talking in the 2000s. Uh, so this is, this is very good news. Uh, also, the, un, you know, the unfortunate statistic here is the COVID associated deaths were at 7,449. The positive thing is that since yesterday, we only added two. And uh, so that the uh, fatality rate is, is, is dropping precipitously. In the state of Connecticut, uh, you know, Fairfield, Hartford and, New, and uh, New Haven counties are the places to avoid in the state. East of the Connecticut River, um, New London County has 44 patients in the hospital, Tallinn two and Wyndham nine. So in the entire eastern part of the state here, we represent only 8.9% of the, the total patients. So we continue on our good luck streak here. Vaccines have been administered, uh, the first dose to 473,784 people. Second dose is 218,062 people for a total of almost 700,000 uh, vaccinations here in the state of Connecticut. Connecticut uh, remains in the top four states in the nation for vaccine distribution. And as a result of that, the, uh, the federal government has upped our allocation by 22% starting next week. A couple of other interesting statistics is 66% of our 75 year old uh, uh, population has been vaccinated and 23% of the ages 65 to, to 74. We remain in the phase 1B of COVID. Uh, the next phase will open here in the coming weeks and will open to include individuals between the ages of 16 and 64 who have underlying health conditions and frontline essential workers, which will include the rest of our uh, utility staff um, as it stands today. Uh, the governor also announced uh, yesterday that he's going to up the capacity of private, social, and recreational events uh, at commercial uh, venues beginning on Friday, March 19th. Indoors, it'll go, uh, go up to 50% capacity, capped at 100, and outdoors, it'll be a capacity of up to 200 people. So um, he's also talking about opening um, 
other commercial uh, uh, venues. Um, and there'll be more discussion on that uh, by the end of this week. So uh, uh, we're doing we're doing better than we did a year ago. Significantly better. We know more about what's going on with COVID, and uh, fortunately, we live in a state that uh, people are following the rules, and you can see that by the uh, the great uh, numbers we have today. So we continue at Groton Utilities. We have not had. Uh, we do not have a current case of COVID. Um, we have nobody out sick with COVID in all of Groton Utilities as of this morning. And uh, we continue on with all of our uh, COVID protocols. We have not stopped any of any of our COVID protocols. Anybody have questions on COVID? Questions from the commissioner? Okay. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Just, uh, just you have for Commissioner Giuliani. Just a quick comment, very good information, uh, positive all aspects. And it's a great thing that the Groton Utility staff are all safe and working well. Uh, compliments to all the regulations you guys are meeting and tests to make sure everything, everyone's safe. Good, good job. Thank you. Okay. And, and Mr. May, or, I, I'm not sure who knows the answer to this. Uh, I've asked this last time. Are our people getting vaccinated yet, or are they going to be in phase 1B? Fortunately uh, for us, when uh, the state came out and asked for rosters of essential employees, uh, we, we sent our roster up there. So there's probably uh, 30 to 40 percent of us that have gotten uh, at least one, and there are many of us that have gotten uh, our second vaccination already. And that's because of the, uh, the, the snafu that happened early on uh, when they asked for rosters. Uh, but the rest, of the, the rest of the staff is making appointments uh, that are occurring in March. So we're, we're, doing, we're doing very well. I gotta watch tell you, watch out if you get that second Moderna vaccination because it, it kicked my butt on uh, Friday and Saturday. That's all I have. Okay. So the next is customer service accounts receivable. I didn't see Tina. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll take this. Tina is on, has a vacation day and she sent me the update. Okay, perfect. So um, she made this nice and easy for me and made it a one liner. She said, <laughs> compared to last year, our accounts receivable are actually down 1.2% compared to last year at this time in February. Okay, so that's a good sign. That's very amazing, actually. Any questions or comments from the commission? Okay, next item is water filtration plant project commissioning update. Hi, this is Ray Valentini. Uh, water treatment plant is moving along. We, uh, unit three, two and three, all the piping has been removed and hopefully we'll be starting to put the tile in for the manganese absorbers. We are still working on parts of the building with the PCBs that has to be uh, removed. Uh, the contract is doing a lot of electrical uh, the water wash water tank was taken down. Uh, it was down in only four hours and removed from the site. So that was a historic moment uh, for it being up there that long. Uh, we're still working on some pipe outside. He slowed down some of the wet, some weather issues have been uh, hampering the operation, but uh, everything else is moving his plan. Okay. Questions from the commission? Yeah, uh, Scully has a question. All right. Commissioner Scully, you have the floor. Ray, I see in your pictures of the construction, it says new lab. Is the lab moving back into the plant? No, that's a, we've always had a lab upstairs. Right. Uh, so this lab has been moved down to the first the second floor, 
where the operation and people are going to sit. So we test, we, every shift does tests and samples yes. during the day. So that's what that's for. But your test lab is staying where it is? Yes, the, the main lab is staying where it is. Okay. Okay. Anything else? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, projects update. This is Bruce Kraszewski. I'll just give you a few updates on the transmission project. Right now, uh, we've been notified that we'll probably be placed on the Connecticut Siding Council meeting agenda for either February 25th or March 11th of this year for the next uh, step for the approval process, which is good news. Uh, VHB uh, done the survey and staking for the edge of the right of ways. So that's, uh, that's where we're at with that. Uh, EV project, we're tentative scheduled is basically start setting poles uh, next week on uh, on that project too. And we'll hopefully by the end of next week, we'll get a uh, updated uh, construction proposal for installing the Henrik lines on uh, from, from BHI too. So, so that project's moving along. Uh, the 300, 305 sub uh, transmission project the final design is 95% down, uh, done. Uh, and that's, that's the project is off of Jurassic Drive. There's four poles we need to replace in, in the wetlands. And the BHI have started a permit, all permit process. So that's in the, in the works. And they're working on a construction proposal for that project too for us too, so. Okay. Uh, just an update for the commission last night, we had a public hearing on all the bonds for all the work for the water. Uh, so for water, electric, Bosra electric and wastewater, we had the public hearings last night. The Freeman's meeting to authorize those bonds will occur on one March. So that's just to let you know, and we'll be reaching out to you to get you guys to uh, come to that meeting so that you can vote for them uh, because we'll need every, I, I don't know how it's going to go. I can't imagine anybody wanting to come out to, to vote these down, but uh, I, don't, I don't like to uh, take anything for granted. So we'll keep you posted. Okay. <clears throat> Old business. I have a question on projects. Uh, okay, go ahead. It, it um, Walker, Walker Hill uh, water tank project. There's a sidewalk kind of half built in front of there. Is that a GU project? Is that part of the tank project or is that something else? I'm not sure who that question would go to. That was part of the uh, site approval. That's uh, that. So we did that. We have the finished part will be one of the station is put in, the new driveway will put in and connect it at the same elevation. You notice we left that space out, so. Okay, that's why it's not complete. Right, that's that okay. that makes sense. So that, that was a requirement to build a new tank to put that sidewalk in? Yes. Yeah. There's a plan in the town to make that a bike path. So all the sidewalks in that area have to be 10 feet wide. Yeah, they have a nice one down Pleasant Valley Road, Route 12. Yeah. So we're gonna do we're gonna do the sidewalk, the walls, the pump station there, all that is coming up here pretty soon, right, Ray? Yes, it is. Uh, we almost final design will be come to us uh, from the pump station manufacturer. He's working on a few more items to get the exact build in so we can get the foundation in the ground, and then hopefully uh, everything starts getting built. And you built a new sidewalk in front of the filter plant. Was yes, we did. That nice job on that. That looks good. Yeah, that was all in house. They did a good job. Yep, they did. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on uh, the project's update before we move on? Okay. Wastewater treatment facility odor update. Yeah, so this is Mark, uh, Mark Byron again. Um, we continue working with uh, EB and Pfizer, uh, working on their flows. Uh, we continue uh, monitoring those additional monitoring points. 
All of the trends have remained, uh, remained uh, good. Uh, we have not seen any spikes uh, and have not had any odor complaints. The one additional thing uh, we're embarking on, and that's part of today's agenda, is uh, hopefully uh, we'll get approved to bring uh, Wright Pierce uh, in to uh, do a uh, wastewater treatment plant study. And that will include conversion to a uh, pump station. Uh, you know, that is part of the uh, study. And uh, Ray and I actually met with the town of Groton yesterday just to give them a heads up, uh, give them an opportunity to think about the feasibility of, um, you know, taking, taking our, uh, our flow over that way. Uh, but uh, I just want to put that out there because uh, there were several citizens out there a few months ago that were make, asking us, uh, you know, why we hadn't looked at that. And it is part of the scope of um, the, the uh, wastewater treatment plant study. So uh, that's all I have on the odor update uh, this morning. Okay. All right, thank you. Let me scroll down. So action items. The first action item for today is I need a motion for GUC WPCA 21-02-10, consideration of an action authorized ground utilities management to approve the engineering agreement for and purchase and issue a purchase order to Wright Pierce Engineering 169 Main Street 700 Plaza, Middlesex, Middle, Middlesex, Middletown, Connecticut for the City of Groton Wastewater Treatment Facility. Facility study for an amount not to exceed 250, $252,520 in no sense to be paid from the approved FY21 operating budget and that the City Council be apprised of this action with the recommendation that it concur and that the Director of Utilities, Ronald Egaday, be authorized to sign the engineering agreement. So moved. Second. Okay, so we have a motion from Zuliani, second from Scully. Uh, discussion? So this is the study that uh, I referenced just a moment ago uh, where we're having uh, Wright Pierce uh, uh, come in, who is also our, our um, uh, master service agreement uh, vendor uh, for water and wastewater, and uh, have them do a complete uh, top to bottom, uh, soup the nuts uh, study to see what we can uh, do to either uh, turn, turn the current wastewater treatment facility into a pumping station or improve the operation and or processes uh, that we conduct down there to uh, bring, bring the plant up to uh, modern standards. Okay. Any, any further comment from the commission? Any seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, motion carries. I need a motion from GUC WPCA 21-02-11, consideration of an action to that being in the best interest of ground utilities to obtain clean, clean water fund financing for the city of Groton wastewater treatment facility, authorize Groton utilities management to enter into contracts with the Department of Energy and Environment, Environmental Protection, DEEP, the Mayor Keith Hedrick be authorized to enter into and sign contracts on behalf of Groton Utilities and that the mayor be further authorized to provide such additional information and execute such other documents as may be required by the state or federal government in connection with said contracts and to execute any amendments, rescissions and revisions thereto and that the city council be apprised of this action. And furthermore, that the clerk of the city of Groton is authorized to impress the seal of the city of Groton on any such document, rescission, or revision. So moved, Jeff Godley. Second. Moved by Godley, seconded by Scully. Discussion? So this is, go ahead. No, go ahead, Ron. Um, 
the, this action item is a follow up to the action item that was just voted on. Um, it's a requirement of the DEEP that this resolution be in place in this format in order to apply for grants. Um, this action item, if approved, will go to city council as a resolution and will satisfy that requirement. The opportunity exists to apply for a grant and redeem up to 55% of the cost of the study that we that you just approved above the 152,000. The ability to apply for grant monies was taken into consideration when we moved the wastewater treatment facility out of the city's general fund and placed it under the utility as a rate based structure. So um, the hope is that uh, as, as we start executing the study, the grant process moves forward and we could be eligible up to 55% uh, reimbursement depending on the funding levels. The grants are given in a first come first serve basis as you go through their grant years. So this is one of the good things for moving the, the wastewater facility from the tax base into uh, an enterprise account under gotten utilities is that we are eligible for grants. This is an awful wordy way to say grant. We can't, there's no easier way to say this. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is gonna come. So when we write the resolution somewhere, we ought to put the word grant in there because council is gonna be confused. Cause they're gonna see this and cause I'm reading this and I know what it's for. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is awful wordy. But if this is the, if this is the language that we have to have from uh, uh, DEP and DPH, then I got it. I understand. Right. It, if you look at the back and the backup to this re, uh, action item and yeah. it, with the resolution, they actually give you the wording. And uh, Maureen and I actually made a slimmed down version. And then yeah. we get in and we just left it the same because we didn't want to jinx ourselves. Um, yeah, got it. No, I understand. It's just, I just think it's funny because I try to be, hey, I need a grant. And then here we're going through this long thing. Is there any further discussion on this action item? I just okay. had one footnote for uh, clarification, Mayor. Sure. That uh, the planning potential grant is 55%, but moving forward on construction, it's a lower percent. Okay. So... <clears throat> Question. My thought on this is that any grants that we can get, whether they're for research or whether for actual work in progress, is going to be beneficial to us and is one of the reasons. So that's great news. Commissioner Zuliana, you have the floor. Yes. Uh, a quick question. As I'm looking at the notes, footnotes below, this contract will allow us to take the uh, any grants away from the city general group fund and then place it directly with the responsibility of the grant utilities where it should be is that do i understand that right we we already several years ago moved um the wastewater the sewer fund from ad valorem in the tax base to rate based in the utility rate being rate based is one of the um preferences for deep when they uh put you in line for the grants Placing the financial burden on the customer. Yes. Okay. Got it. Now, one thing I one thing I do want to make clear, and I do periodically talk about, is when you look at municipal funding and debt loading, there's a maximum amount of debt loading that we can have. If you look at the utility, there is no such debt loading uh, requirement or anything like that. The only exception is. If you go into the Connecticut general statutes, when it talks about the formation of a water pollution control authority, it says that that funding does go against the debt loading ratio and its own, own ratio uh, to, the, to the municipality. Now I've talked to Ron Uhas and uh, we're, we're way below the threshold one overall, but two for the, for the debt loading associated with the wastewater plant. But I just want to remind it, remind us of that. Question. Uh, Commissioner Scully. 
Grant writing. Do do we write grants in house or we outsource that? Do we have a grant writer? I know they're quite cumbersome. We we currently do all that work internal. For the grant we got for the water treatment facility, um, Rick and Ray were lead and spearheaded that whole effort internally. Um, for this one, uh, we actually have a person assigned to it with help of Rick Ray and the entire rest of the team. It, it, we currently do all that internally. Okay. okay. Any other questions or comments on this? Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries. Okay, I need a motion for GC. Uh, Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Mayor aye. The, uh, the next action item, did you get the replacement action item for it? Uh, yes, let me, let me hold on. Well, Maureen's gonna share the screen with it also. Well, that's not gonna help with my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> hold on i i thought that i hold on we'll see if i'm as smart as i think i am okay i have the updated action item i'm bringing it up in word okay here we go all right w, uh, i need a motion for GUC wpca 21-02-12, consideration of an action authorized grant and utilities management to enter into two, a, enter into two year contract with two one year renewal options for lawn and ground maintenance for the 2021-2022 landscaping seasons with Diamond Landscaping, One Island Brook Avenue, Bridgeport, Connecticut for a contract amount of $99,825 and no cents for ground utilities properties. Costs to be shared between water division and the electric division to be paid from the approved fiscal year 2021 and proposed fiscal year 2022 operating budgets. And furthermore, to city council be apprised of this action with the recommendation that it concur. So move, Jeff Godley. Second. Okay, moved by Godley, seconded by Zuliani. Discussion? So we went out to bid and uh, this, this year we only had three uh, bidders. Usually we get a lot more. So these, uh, we looked uh, this company up. It's a pretty big company from Bridgeport. They do some uh, Lawn cutting and grass cutting in uh, other towns closer to us, Montville and stuff. So we just uh, we ended up picking them. Okay. I I find it unfortunate that no local uh, landscapers put in for it. I, I'd I'd like to see contracts like this go to uh, customers of Groton Utilities, um, but if they don't bid on it, there's not much you can do about that. Um, All right. S sending this to to Bridgeport, I don't know, just in, seems like we should, could keep it local, but if we're going with low bidder, this is what we get. Yep. Any other questions or comments? All right, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries. Okay, and the last motion is I need a motion for GUC WPCA 21-02-13, consideration of an action authorized grant and utilities management to issue, issue a purchase order to RLC Engineering 267 Witten Road, Hollowell, Maine, for $75,000 and no cents as a sole source provider for the Navy system impact study and 1.3.9 application required by independent system operator New England, ISO New England, as part of the Noresco Generation Project located at the U.S. Naval Submarine Base in Groton, Connecticut, to be paid by customer funds already on deposit to cover costs for the work, for this work, and furthermore, to City Council be apprised of this action with the recommendation it concur. So moved. 
Second. Motion by Scully, second by Godley. Uh, discussion? Bruce Kishesky. Yeah, this is for a U.S. Navy. Yep. Go ahead, Bruce. This is for a U.S. Navy Norisco Generation Project. It's ISO New England required a system impact study to be formed and have I-39 application. This is, again, this is RLC that done work for us on our previous jobs too. So, and, and it's basically, they, this PL will basically do an impact study and basically do the application for the I-39. So. Bruce, can you tell us what they're installing? <laughs> no. <laughs> Me neither. So I, I, I'll, I'll do that. Um, okay. okay, good. The Navy is planning on stall, installing two natural gas reciprocating engines that will provide the Navy with a total of 10.8 megawatts of generation, co-generation capacity on base for uh, electrical reliability and um, environmental friendliness. Okay, so comments these, from the commission. Uh, Commissioner Scully. These are uh, gas turbines similar to ones that Pfizer has, Ron? That, that's a negative. They're natural gas fired reciprocating engines. Reciprocating engines, oh. So it's two five megawatt units or? Uh, it, it, yeah, they're slightly uh, over five. Like five and a half. Okay. And uh, are they going near the sub? Substation, their substation um, on the hill. They're, they're actually installing them at the powerhouse. Um, they're oh, they're, yeah, they're in the middle of a demolition project. So these engines <laughs> provide primary backup power to the to the direct waterfront. Sorry. How long will this installation take place? When will it be done? Completed. Uh, Aaron, do you know anticipated completion date? Uh, we actually had a call yesterday with uh, Noresco, GU, and the Navy. I believe the holdup right now may be on Navy authorization. Um, so I actually don't have a date at this time. But I do believe it's fast tracked for the next two to three years. Yeah, just something happened in the procurement process that may cause a delay. But yes, you're originally, originally timeline, yes, you're correct. Any other comments? I have a question. I, I heard Ron use the word backup. Are these backup generators or are these generators meant to run full time? Uh, they, they will run uh, base loaded and they will trim back based on the export out of, uh, out of the base. They're, they're, if the base is only using nine megawatts, they'll only use nine, uh, produce nine megawatts. So but they can throttle these back? They will throttle back based on base need. Uh, and the, the, anticipate, the anticipated use is for base, base load demand. So they will run uh, the majority of the time. So between these and their fuel cells, which um, they're not online yet, are they? The fuel cells. Uh, the fuel cells are owned by uh, seem uh, well, they are owned by Fuel Cell Energy, but that production is primarily for CMAC. Those mm -hmm. cells are in the process of being commissioned right now, and I'm gonna say that the production may be two to three months out before they're online all of the time. Uh, that production will be primarily for our distribution system and the base as needed. So with both these projects are online, the base could run neutral? Uh, when both of these sets of generators are online in about three years, um, the fuel cell could be exporting uh, out to our distribution system. Okay. All right. Any, any other questions or comments on this? All right, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 
Extension. Motion carries. Okay, there is no executive session. I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Scully, second by Zilliani to, ad to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extension? Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you, Commission. Thank you, staff, for everything that you're doing. Hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. You too.